Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and finally we are back working on the 33.3 window with the Arden. So the last video uh, was a really big one. We got the engine back from Ron, and then I showed putting the engine into the car. Uh, a, it was really great to, uh, you know, see the engine in the car after the, all the time of, uh, of finding the heads and putting the engine together and Ron working on it. Uh, so we were able to see that, which was great. All my motor mounts of fabrication I did while Ron had the engine and we were exchanging measurements worked out pretty good. A couple little adjustments I have to do, but nothing uh, too hurtful. Now the big thing I was waiting on on this car uh, that I just didn't want to go off measurements, I wanted to have the actual engine in the car, was the firewall. So this car had a fabricated firewall that was done in the 50s or 60s out of like eighth inch plate steel. They actually did a pretty good job for the time period because it was done pretty much with an oxyacetylene torch, the whole job. Looks pretty good, um, but it doesn't quite match the level of work that I'd like on the car, number one. Number two, we need to actually make room for this engine. So the engine, because of the size and where I ended up putting it, it's set back just a tiny bit. So we need to actually set the firewall back just a little bit. So what I'm decided to do is make a firewall from scratch, like we show a lot on this channel. Um, so I'm gonna be doing for the first time with my, uh, it's a Lennox or Pullmax type machine, a reciprocating machine. We're gonna actually stamp a firewall for this. So my idea is to um, replicate an original firewall. I'm gonna take some measurements off of Mike's firewall with the size and shape of the beads and everything transfer that onto a paper pattern, and basically make something that uh, is modified to fit this specific, specific car, but will kind of look like it could have came there from the factory when it's all set and done. It's gonna be really fun, it's a learning process. I've never made uh, anything with stamping on uh, that Lennox machine or reciprocating machine. Uh, I've done some little stuff since I got the machine, but this is kind of like the reason I got it for jobs like this. So it's gonna be a fun learning experience. It's gonna take quite a while to do this because of all the steps, but in the end, I think it's gonna turn out really, really cool. So stick around, watch the video. This is gonna be fun.
how to give you a heads up I didn't think of. This bottom piece, you need to put a chamfer on it. So that the bead, that's what gives you that shape of the bead right. on the opposite side. Otherwise, it gets a, it's just a sharp edge and I want to rip the metal. Yeah, so that's what putting that chamfer bit on, it gives it that rolled edge. Mm -hmm. It gives you that roll down. Yep. So now, how do we, how do we get it out? <laughs> I wonder if we could get the table out for Well, this one. Well, we can drop this all the way down. This is all the way up. I knew I wasn't going to get to use it the next day. The other thing is, you should, you're supposed to drill holes and put bolts through these, they say, sometimes. Because it, it, can, it can wreck. The screws can pull out of the wood as you're, okay. as yeah. you're working it, and mm -hmm. then it'll start flopping. Yeah, and then you're screwed. That's, that, that's pretty fucking good. Now. Now? A little too I don't much like, of a chamfer. I don't like that. Yeah, maybe it's a little That's too much. That's too much of a yep. chamfer because it's, it, it's... Right, it's got too much of a ramp on it. Yeah, just fine tuning the shape now. I think your depth is this, fine. This bottom piece, yeah. I was thinking we were going way deeper, so I was overthinking it. Mm -hmm. I was thinking we had to go all the way down to the die almost touching the metal, and that's like no. an incredibly... I mean, I'm sure we could a, do that. a half inch. Yeah. Yeah. But that's... That's pretty good. I mean, from yeah, a is. visual standpoint, it's stamped. But mm -hmm. uh, we want more of a crisp. Yeah. Bead. Probably, yep. Okay, so I did a couple tests yesterday and we weren't quite happy with what we were getting. We got a little closer by the end of the day. This is one I um, had DA'd to kind of get the look of it. And what I've been fighting, trying to figure out is there's this rise here that on, we've been trying to kind of get rid of. So you could see on our test pieces here, look how big that, you could see just the sides that the rise, you know, was, was pretty far here and I didn't like that. Um, so I tuned up my dies, this one, I had a real narrow contact point and I think that was causing some of the problem. Um, and then these other ones I, I started, uh, I changed the die a little bit and ran it, changed the chamfer on the, pad, on the uh, buck, for lack of a better term, so the wood. This is what I started with, which gave us a kind of a big taper on the end of the bead. And then finally today, I talked to my buddy Ben on the phone and we were brainstorming because he has a little more experience than I do. Um, and I ended up flopping the piece around and used this side that was originally in the top. And this has like no chamfer on. All I did was just knock the loose wood off with the sandpaper by hand and use this as the bottom to form into it. The other thing I ended up doing versus this one we got yesterday, which was getting closer, was I formed it much deeper. So Ben was kind of telling me how you know, you can form the full half, three quarter inch, whatever, if you want, if you go slow. So I was being very, very um, reserved with this. So I went probably close to the half inch rise on this one. And you can see how we tightened up this bead now. So there's, it's, you know, a sharp line here like I wanted. There wasn't like, you know, the, the profile didn't start way out here. So we were stamping down into that and that's getting us that better, you know, tight looking bead there. So the rise is very pronounced. I mean, you can look how much we've got that, that 
risen up off the panel or, or pressed in. You can't really do this with a bead roller. This is why I got this machine. Um, the other thing is with this sandwich method, you can see the panel is you know pretty much flat. And this is 16 gauge. Again, my bead roller, I would be, there is no way I could do this. It would end up just blowing a fuse and you wouldn't get this nice flat panel. So I, uh, I'm very happy with that. The look is good. Again, this is just my test piece, so that waviness is just because my pattern I freehanded with the router. But uh, overall, the crispness of the bead is there. That's what I'm looking for. It looks like it's almost stamped from the factory. So very happy with that. I'm going to do one more run in this piece here because I have a little extra area. And I'm going to do, I think this is actually a little, almost too much rise compared to the original firewall. So this is probably a little too aggressive. So I'm going to go like a turn or two back less on my bottom table um, to make the stamping just a little smaller if possible. And I should get me in the, in the ballpark, I'm hoping. Um, and we'll just compare this one to the next one. And then we'll kind of have our procedure down where I've been writing on the, um, this lower adjustment here. I have written down like here, 14 turns for that one that I showed you was 16 was all the way up. Table's basically all the way up and everything's kind of, that's what we're getting at. So I'm going all the way up with this. And then this piece I bought from Cornfield Customs. He is a very talented metal shaper and sells all kinds of different parts and bits. So he sells this for the Lennox. It's a huge help. So I'm able to just kind of go notch by notch. So I may play with going up one or two notches and see what the rise is like and go from there. I'm very much a beginner on this machine. So I'm figuring it all out as I go before we try and stamp our first you know, big piece. So that's how I got going. One more test run, then we'll start making our uh, pattern. definitely the difference. Yeah. The more you raise it, the less you get rid of that slope. Gotcha. Because I just did, I just did 14 instead of 16. Yep. And it's still an acceptable, like I don't yeah. think the taper looks, but you notice it's got just a little more. Yeah, you more. can definitely see the difference, yeah.
All right, so after a bunch of work with the router and a file, I was able to get uh, the, these two pieces that sandwiched together, all cut and our pattern cut out for our firewall. So uh, what I did in the end, I tried a couple of methods. So the first like two um, that I did, the radius and, and the peaks there, uh, I ended up using the whole saw and, or I'm sorry, the uh, router plunge cut and then I took a, a saw blade, uh, like a um, little body saw with a wood blade and cut between it, knocked out the piece, and then I filed it into shape. It was a lot of filing to do that. So Mike had a really good idea, why don't you just do a light, um, a light pass with the router and then come back through and that gives you a guide to cut all the way through. So that's what I did on most of these. Went a lot quicker, required a lot less filing, and I went through and smoothed everything up with the filing. Um, on all the flat areas and everything. So it's pretty good. Uh, now what I need to do, oh, also I went and drilled all these holes throughout. These are all the quarter inch holes. What we're using is um, carriage bolts. So on the bottom, we put these actually the other way, up through like that. And then when you draw them in real tight, tap them with a hammer, you can actually countersink the heads so they're just below the surface. So when you have it on the table, um, on the machine, it's not dragging or rocking on that, it's sitting flat on the board. So what I need to do now is take the two pieces apart. I have uh, four screws, one in each corner, just wood screws that's kind of locating everything. And now that we have all these holes in it, it's, it can only go together one way. So I need to take this apart, just break the edges on the second board where the metal is going to actually form into it, just by hand with some sandpaper, just soften the edge a tiny bit. And then we'll put our piece of metal here with uh, my, my nephew Evan drew a bob on the, on the, uh, in the dust there. So we're gonna get rid of bob, unfortunately, put it in <laughs> this wood here, and then I'll dr drill all these holes that correspond, put the bolts through it, and what they do is they're gonna sandwich everything together so that the metal can't pull or warp too much because everything pulled tight with all these different bolts throughout. So I'm gonna get that done, and then we are just about ready to put this thing in the, in the uh, in the Lennox and get it stamped. We're gonna pick a side, like this This particular one, some of these mm -hmm. are, are a bit wider with this play, just because the way with the opening, you know, when you get this radius, it gets wider yep. at the one spot. So we need to pick, what I was doing before is I was picking a side to use as your guide. To favor, right. Yep. And then if we want, we could always run it the next time on the other side, but I'm, I'm unsure if I want to do that or not because if it's a little wider here, will the bead visually look like it goes like this? Right. That's true. Yeah, it might. So we may want to just favor one side. That'll give us the bead we want. And then mm -hmm. if we pull it out and it looks like there's a weird taper on the one side of the bead, then we may have to put it back in and run yeah. it and see what happens. I don't right. really know what's going to happen, but we're going to want to probably, I guess we'll taper the back edge. Or favor. Favor the back edge. Okay. So it will be yep. here, and then you know as it's running, I'll mm -hmm. be pushing against the back edge. Yep. Like that, and then we'll rotate like that. So that's the part that's a little tricky. Is yeah. You gotta remember to rotate that full way. It seems like you should be able to just go right in it, but for to get the clearance right, yep, you gotta go like that, and then. Yep. Turn it all the way 
you know, in one spot. Yep. And then come back like that. What do you think? Damn the torpedoes. <laughs> I am nervous. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> I have a lot of time into this. Yeah, he's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, how about it? everything up a lot better on this one so there's not as much yeah not as much like wood flying yeah I just want to have it just no, in case good. yep looks good Heck yeah it's pretty good pool oh yeah it's got a nice looks, nice radius on yeah it looks yeah. nice and sharp there yep now this one's a little tighter because I didn't have this huge oak yeah you know the real sharp bend yep. but it's really not that violent when you, as long as you keep just a little pressure down. Yeah, yeah, you um, got to keep it tight against, yep. So, start this, the amusement ride. <laughs>
but I wasn't sure what the hell was There's nothing to help <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta let us ride the Bronco. Exactly, yeah, it's a little... Whew, my arms. arms. It's a no, we don't want any of that. And crisp. Yeah, it is. Man, yeah, that, that's what our problem was last time we had. Yep. I think we had, we weren't going deep enough, and the, the, the buck I made was so rough cut, it was like, I mean, we had a little gap in this one, but we had like half an inch yeah. on either side, yeah, so it was, it was drawing. It was probably too much on the other one. But like this, there's really no, like, we'll, we'll find out. Oh, Damn, wow. wow. That looks awesome. Oh, heck yeah. And that's like the perfect depth. Yeah. Because yep, it's the like, size looks really good. It looks very similar to what the factory was. That, yep. It's funny that extra like one turn made it look a little weird. Yep. And you, you could definitely see a couple little like wobble spots like right here. Yeah. That might have been where it was vibrating on it us. It could have been, yeah. Yep. And it got a little funky. And there's a little spot in my, my Buck uh, that must have been a little just off a there. Hair of a dip there, yeah. But that you can kind of da, mm -hmm. you know, all that out. But man, that's just that looks freaking so, cool. So that's can't do that with a bead roller. No, oh, no, nope. All right, well that makes me feel good. <laughs> cool. Heck yeah. So we got it all separated, and you could see. It's a good shot. You can just see how, you know, how much it's pressed um, or stamped like up that you just can't, like I've said a bunch of times, you can't get that with a bead roller. Uh, I've done bead rolling for years. I've gotten pretty good at it. There is no way. And the other thing that to look at is whenever you bead roll something, there's no pre-stretch in this. We just sandwiched it, sandwiched it, and ran it, and the panel is flat. 
There's no, there's no need for me to do any type of work other than I'm gonna have to weld up all these little holes here. But normally if you were bead rolling something like this in the center of a panel, um, you would have, the panel would be like a potato chip and I would have, you know, days into flattening and planishing and all that stuff. So with this, it's pretty much stamped, it's good to go. Now I can weld up all these holes, uh, finish that all out, and then we'll mark our, our brake lines and then we'll put our bends in it and, you know, of course, trace the shape out and all that stuff. So really happy with that. It's awesome. Finally, my expensive ass machine got used. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, how about it? Well, it worked well. Yep. It worked well. to it so mm -hmm. that's actually zero there so what did i say 27. Mm -hmm. all right <laughs> just stand on that side with that handle and just yep help catch it if you, you don't have to be right in there yeah just don't want to be in the way <laughs> well it's going to hit your knee there uh oh i'm good nope, i'm not good you're right you're fine yep Just, just stand out of the way. You're banging the camera. Yeah, I know. There's no room in that corner. You're fine. Apparently, I can do this myself. This big ass break. What did I say? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. That's twenty-five. Spring back. You got. That's right in the ballpark. Just by tapping around. 27.3. Oh, I think I can let that slide. Okay. Didn't touch the bead. Good. So that's going to make this like that eventually. Mm hmm. <laughs> Outsm I'm good. outsmarting myself. Yeah, right, yeah. If you want to get on that side, we'll yep. just try and put it back in the crevice. Just hold it. Just kind of hold it up, and then we'll we'll double check the yep. measurement. This side looks pretty good there. So yeah, we were. I had the. I must have had the angle finder spun the other way, so it was giving me. The other end of it. Yeah, so we want 72. Yep. I'm like, held it up to the car, like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> 63. 
it's right in the ballpark. <clears throat> Seventy three, seventy two, seven five. It's funny I could see it spring back like that. Mm hmm. Or half a degree off. I think we'll let that go. I think that I think we can make that work. So go to the top of the line, and then I'll clamp them. We'll I think I'm, I'm out a little bit yeah. yet. Yep. That's pretty good. Now I'm out. Yeah, now I pulled that end out. Thing got really strong. <laughs> with, a, with one bend. Yeah, a nice. All right, so we're going to 85. Five six, we're we're close. That sounds about I can right. adjust. Mm -hmm. Half a degree, I'm not that good. <laughs> I wish I was, but I'm not. Dude, that that looks very much like a firewall. It's funny how small it is because the car's channeled so hard. Yeah, it's like that's the firewall. That's it. <laughs> Top of those, so. but what's the catch? What's the catch? Right on the inside, on the inside edge, right here. Well, there's a, there's a booger weld there. Can it fit over that? Try a little harder. May have to open the door and bang on it. To... Yeah. Let me see if I can get bolts through. So okay. what I wanted to do is try and. Didn't think about the pattern being reversed when I double checked that bolt hole, so I, oh. may, I may have to drill a new hole in the bracing. Mm -hmm. All right, so Steve and I have had this firewall in and out about 50 times, uh, just slowly trimming away the edges and filing and sanding and doing whatever's needed, but we got two bolts in and we have it hanging and it looks freaking awesome. Really, really excited about how it's coming out. Um, so we're just changing a handful of things. So the bend that we put in the firewall down here, this face that's smooth, um, I had a little bit too much of a bend in it than I like. So we put it on the floor, right on the bend, and just used a little bit of our body weight to take that bend out just a little bit. Now what's happening is we're touching back here at this bolt for the water block off. So on the Arden heads, the original ones, they had this kind of cone-shaped block off that allowed you to put the, it makes the head symmetrical basically, and allows you to put the water outlet on, on either side. So on the front, obviously, we have these cool pipes that Ron made uh, that the water comes out and will go to the radiator. But the back side, Ron and I were discussing this, and he could have made a flat plate to put on there but it's one of those nerdy things when you look at this engine, anybody that knows, you're gonna be like, oh man, holy crap, he has original block off. So that's why we kept them and now it's causing additional work, of course. So this is hitting on the bolt head. 
And sure, I could machine the bolt down um, or put a flathead Allen on there, and that could work, but also it's still gonna probably end up hitting because we wanna take a little more bend out. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna knock this thing with a giant hammer <laughs> that I spent, I got way too many hours in. So we're gonna, basically what I'm gonna do is we're gonna heat this with the torch right in that area, get it red hot, and I'm gonna basically pound a, um, a relief in there in a hopefully controlled manner. Uh, we're gonna try and hammer and dolly and, and smooth that out after I do that. But we're gonna basically hammer a blister into it much like someone would have done back in the day. And uh, the goal was to make it look kind of factory but also uh, make everything fit nicely. We're trying to make the firewall so that it bolts in and out. So the process we're doing for all this we're keeping all that in mind. So sure, you could make it jammed up against the engine there and it would rub and probably never really cause an issue. But when we go to take the firewall out, if it's jammed super tight against the ends and you won't be able to fish it out of there. So that's the next step, get that fitting good. We're gonna get hopefully a couple more bolts then in holding the firewall in and uh, get that bend taken out just a little bit and then we can stand back and go, hell yeah. That's the goal at least. Tip needs to be clean too. <laughs> All right, can you be ready to catch this thing? Yep. Um, oh, shit. Got So, made the blister and uh, just smoothed it out in the planishing hammer a little bit. Still got some more work to take a little bit of distortion out, but it's, uh, that's sorted. So we're gonna test fit it and see if we need to go any larger or deeper or if that gives us what we need. Should have counted how many times in the <laughs> year, right? Should have been keeping it out. Are we hitting here? We're hitting here now, I think. I think I, yeah, I can see the line moving. But are we too, gotta be a little higher. I'm a little too high on this side. I gotta come down a little bit to get it in. But we can't tilt it back. I understand. Yeah. See what's causing that.
All right, final, quote unquote, <laughs> install. Got all our holes punched and it should, it should fit now, hopefully. We have a system down for in installation, I think. <laughs> I say that we're gonna But do we swap sides now, it's, we just threw everything off. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, gotta, yeah, I did it by myself yesterday. I know! So it's, it's basically drop down. Right? Yeah, push that in, yeah. drop it down, and then pull it back up, right? Let's pull up a little bit. Oh, oh. what's that again? Okay. All right, so now we can. <clears throat> All right, so Steve and I got the uh, firewall in for the last time in this video. It's still going to need to come out a couple of times just to clean some stuff up. Uh, basically what they did when they originally did this firewall is they left the original firewall like an inch of it or so to strip in, maybe more than an inch, and they kind of just rough cut it with a torch. So it's kind of jagged still behind it, uh, but we used that lip there that they had um, as our basis for mounting this, which worked pretty well just on the inside. I want to clean it up a little bit eventually. Um, the other thing we talked about is we may put some of these threaded inserts, the rib nut type inserts into those flanges instead of having to nut and bolt uh, a bunch of these. If we do that, then it'll make it much more simple. Um, and now that it's fitting pretty darn good, I don't think it'll be too bad to get it in there and all the holes pretty much line up uh, after you get one or two started, it all lines up pretty good. So now that it's in, this is a huge step. Number one, this is something I've never done before. Um, the Pullmax or reciprocating machine, uh, Lennox, whatever you want to call it, um, that was the first time I've used that for anything other than just cutting some stuff. So making the tooling, making the buck, stamping the part, doing a bunch of tests in the beginning before I even made the initial buck. Uh, been a long process to make this kind of small piece, but in the end, um, the look that I got with this, it's very hard to do with anything other than some sort of uh, forming like that that we did with a buck uh, or the machine like that. We couldn't do it with a bead roller. Uh, and it gives nice crisp uh, lines. You can really press the beads out and make them stick up off the panel uh, really high. And then also you're able to kind of, these ends are kind of coined so that they have the nice stamped look to them. And with a bead roller, you just get a line and you'd stop there and you'd have to replicate that with a punch or, or whatever. So doing that all in one shot was very controlled. I was able to weld up all these holes and planish it out and keep everything under control and nothing got warped or crazy, um, which was very, very nice. So really psyched on this. It's very easy to take out. Uh, we decided partway through the process we need to make this easy to remove because in order to uh, tighten any of the hardware, the oil fittings in the back here while there is room off of the fittings or the firewall, there's not much room to get a wrench in there. So we'll be able to take this out, tighten all the fittings up and everything that we need to do, or if there's a little seep, we could take the firewall out and address it. Um, and it's pretty easy, which is great. So now that this is done, that's the last big major body thing that needs to happen. There's a little bit of work I need to do around the door edges where I cut in the door gaps from when they originally did the chop. Uh, I need to do the lower rocker strips that like every 33-4 needs. I have them reproduction ones here. They're pretty simple to cut out and weld back in. So a bunch of that type of work. Then we'll get into some of the fun stuff, making exhaust. I've decided the headers, the Zumi headers that I had while they were cool, um, I don't think they're really great for actually driving it more than just around the block or you know short distances. So I think I'm going to make a full exhaust for a street version and then I'll also finish the other Zumi headers so that we have them. If I want to make a bunch of noise, I can, but I want to have those options. So I'm going to make the full exhaust first um, and have that on there and uh, we'll figure that all out. I'm going to do a couple little adjustments to the top tank here uh, where it's just barely touching the radiator on the pulley. I uh, just got to make some sort of adjustment or maybe deal with doing a custom uh, top tank instead. I don't know yet, but We'll let it speak to us like I always say, but that's pretty much it for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I think this looks as bitchin' as I do, because this is uh, really completes the car. Thank you guys, catch you later.